Covenant family, we come to this Pentecost at a time in our history, at a time in our lives, in which I am of the opinion we need a miracle. I mean, let's talk about a few of these things. How about our, our church, Covenant United Methodist Church? We've been on a time of downward trajectory regarding attendance for years. It doesn't feel like there's an easy fix or answer. There seems to be somewhat of a lack of direction and identity at times with who we are as a church and what our top goals are. What is God inviting us into? What are we going to do as Covenant United Methodist? And that was pre-COVID. And then how about COVID? America crossing 100,000 deaths, of course, many more than that worldwide. And we think about all the lives lost and so much that has changed and it's really hard. It's really hard on us, and there are so many that are mourning. And then we live in a time where this week we have had the racism in this nation put right on full display with the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis and other instances as well this week where people were treated so differently, clearly because of the color of their skin. Do you join me in this opinion we need a miracle. And as we come to Acts chapter 2, I imagine those first disciples also felt like they were in need of a miracle. They had followed with their rabbi and teacher, Jesus. They had come to see his power, that he was the Son of God, that he was their Lord and Savior. And then he was gone. They were in need of a miracle too, I think, friends. And what happens? But God sends the Holy Spirit to be with them. They got to see our God in God's full power on display, God's full loving presence that would come and be right with them. Friends, God sends the Holy Spirit to be with us right when we need God in the midst of a time where we're looking for a miracle. The Holy Spirit is with us. We celebrate this Pentecost season knowing that God has never left us, and God is there with us when we need God. And what is the miracle that God does? We hear in verse 4 and then in verse 6 that God connects the people with each other. God connects the disciples with the many listeners, with these devout Jews that were in the area, and God helps the people connect with one another in their speaking and in their hearing. There really are two miracles, in a way, present in this one story where the first disciples are able to speak in these other languages. How cool is that? But then it even gets more amazing where people are hearing in their own native language what they need to hear, and somehow God is connecting people with one another. Oh, do we need that same ability? Oh, do we need God to direct us in a way where we would be able to speak in such a way that other people would hear us, and we need that help from God that we could become a people where we would hear the true meaning, we would hear what other people are intending to offer us. In so many ways, there is a brokenness among us and inside each of us where it can be really hard to connect with one another. We know that this goes at every level. This goes in our families and personal relationships to across all kinds of divisions and racial lines in this nation. We need to be able to be connected with one another again. We need to be able to hear and to love one another. When I think about what that miracle means for, for us today in the church, I hope one of the things that we hear is an empowerment from God that the Spirit will help us to speak, that we can feel safe to try to use our voice, to try to use what God has given us, and to trust that, that God will speak it in a way that can be, provide meaning in other people's lives. This is what I do every Sunday when I try to prepare a sermon. I know I'm going to mess up. I know I'm not going to say things exactly as I planned, and certainly not with full perfection. And yet I trust that somehow God will be at work. Well, the sermon is just one example of this, right? This can be our words at all times and in every place, with every neighbor that we would come across. We can trust that, God, you will use my voice and let's us seek to speak in such a way that we would provide words of healing and love and meaning to our neighbors each and every day. We also have a God who will help us in the hearing of these words, 
Help us to be able to, you know, sort out those things that are not from God, those things that are lies in the words of another, in the words from a TV screen, and instead be able to hear a truth from God, hear what we need to hear, that we would be connected with one another again. Friends, that we would be brothers and sisters under God in this world. Oh, what a wonderful miracle God has for all of us. And so as we're connecting with each other, as the Spirit gives us ability, what are we going to be talking about? Verse 11 gives us a great pointer, that they were sharing the miraculous deeds of God's power. What a wonderful thing that we are invited to be a people who live our lives by our actions and by our words, where we point to God's power, where we point to God's miraculous deeds. I think this means all kinds of things. I think it means that, yes, we tell the story, the story of who God is, of God's creation, of how we've fallen into sin and the ways that God has rescued us. We tell the story of what Jesus Christ has done for us, that God sent his only son and did all kinds of miraculous deeds among us and then died on our behalf that we would experience the forgiveness of sins. We tell the story of God sending the Spirit and that the Spirit is always with us, that God is present always. We tell these biblical stories. We tell the good news of Jesus Christ. And we witness to what God continues to do among us. We witness to the ways we see God at work in this world. We look around and we want to tell others testimonies, right, of ways we've experienced transformation, the ways we've experienced healing and salvation in our Lord, the ways we've seen God today. Sometimes they may feel small, but man, they can make such a difference and be such a source of joy and encouragement for others as they hear what a great God that we have, what a great God that we serve. And I think it also means that we become a people who talk about what God is doing among us. We talk about the ways in which God desires to heal all the nations. God desires not for people to be at war, but for people to be at peace with one another. We know that we have a God who desires unity for us to be like a big family instead of divided in all kinds of categories for all kinds of reasons. God desires to heal us. God desires us to feel God's very love and to live from that love. God desires for us to know ourselves as gifted, as created in God's image, as useful, as people who can actually be God's very body, Christ's body on this earth, offering healing and even the works of God among us and among our hands and feet as we team up on mission for God. And so there is so much great news and great things to describe with people as we connect with one another. May our words and may our lives point to our loving God. Now as we do this, we see in Luke, uh, in Luke's Acts, now in verse 13, that some may think that we are drunk or crazy or unaware, and we have to be okay by, with that. We have to accept that the response that we're going to get from many different people at different times will be a response of rejection, a response of even insult. But we can go and tell the truth of God's great works and God's great power, knowing that the Spirit is with us. It's the Spirit who empowers us to tell these truths and to proclaim this good news. And friends, let's get practical about what we're sharing. I hope one of the things that happens is we're talking about specific things that are happening among us and ways in which they reflect God and ways in which they show us that something is not from God. We need to be able to acknowledge sin among us, brokenness, things that we would say do not line up with what our God intends for us. And then we need to be able to talk about the things that God does intend for us and the great ways we see God at work, hopefully in our very lives, hopefully in the life of the church. We become a people who are able to say, this is not how it's meant to be. This is wrong. This is something that we must fight against. This is not how God intends us or created us. And we need to be able to people who point to exactly what God does intend, a life of love, a life of peace, a life in which we are one family under God. So we will be connected with one another in our speaking and our hearing by God's Holy Spirit. We'll be sharing the great glorious deeds of God's power among us. We will be recognizing the ways in which God is doing great things, what is wrong and what is not of God and what is right and what is from God. And then what should we expect the results to be? Both 
the healing and the coming of all kinds of change in our own personal lives and in our relationships. And friends, I believe we should be expecting to invite people into salvation, into having their lives changed and saved by God. We are all broken in many different ways and we struggle with sin and we will experience salvation as the Spirit moves through us and within us. We will be a people who are able to point to the great and glorious day of the Lord, not as just maybe some vague phrase, but instead a real thing that we can embody and live into and point to, ways that we are able to show that in ways that we've experienced transformation and ways that we've seen it in relationships and in larger communities among us. God does wonderful things, and we get to point to that and say, look, this is part of what it means for the great and glorious day of the Lord to come. It means that we can look to a day like today and a week like this week and say, nope, we're not there yet. There is something future. There is something to hope for, and the great and glorious day is coming. And we also get to imagine and think about what it is for all of us to truly call on the name of the Lord, to call on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, for the ways in which we give up on those things where we have made other gods and and trusted the God of money or the God of um, popularity or the many other things that we've told ourselves will bring our salvation. And instead, we will get to see ourselves and to see other people setting aside those things and submitting their lives to our Lord Jesus Christ. And then their lives are forever changed. We get to experience God's hope and joy and peace and love daily and even from within their very being as they walk as disciples of Jesus Christ. Friends, we will continue to be saved. We will continue to be healed as we live and connect with one another as the Spirit would empower us this Pentecost season. Covenant family, we come to Pentecost this year and we have some wonderful truths to celebrate, some wonderful Pentecost truths to hold and cling to. We have a God who comes to us in the midst of our brokenness. God is always with us. God sends the Holy Spirit. God is with you. We come to this Pentecost and we hold to the truth that we have a God who is powerful and a God who is loving. And we can trust that that same God wants to connect us with each other, with God, over and over again. It's hard sometimes, but we have a God who helps us in our speaking, a God who helps us in our hearing, a God who would connect us with one another the ways that we were intended to be in relationship with one another as the family of God. Friend, we get to hold to the truth that note that says, guess what? This world is not beyond repair. Is there brokenness within it? Oh yes, we see it every day. But it, this present brokenness is not beyond God's repair. God is among us and God is healing us. The Spirit is bringing a great and glorious day and we long for it and we look to it in Jesus Christ. And church, we know that we have a God who offers us salvation in Jesus Christ. We are in need of saving, saving in a lot of different ways, saving from our pains, saving from the ways we've been hurt, and saving from the ways we have participated in sin in this world. And God wants to save us in Jesus Christ. We are invited to be his disciples yet again this day, no matter what mistakes we've made this morning or yesterday. God invites for us to turn and experience repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. We get to be a people who again feel the fullness of God's love and forgiveness, of people who celebrate that God still says that we are of value and wants to use us. And God looks to us and says, I love you, you are mine, you are beloved, and I want you to live from that love. Love me and love your neighbor again. This Pentecost season God invites us to receive and experience and live by God's Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.